This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Upstart and by HelloFresh. Oh God, it's happening again. Despite sculpture being one of the world's oldest art forms with iconic lifelike examples dating back thousands of years, the past few years have not been kind to this art medium. The worst example is still probably the bronze statue of footballer Cristiano Ronaldo, which was unveiled back in 2017 to universal horror and confusion due to looking like a bad sketch done by a child, come to life. A man widely regarded as one of the most handsome athletes in the world was depicted in such an unflattering way that after all the memes and mockery died down, the website Bleacher Report paid for the artist to give it another shot and try to redeem himself, which he fortunately did. Yeah. Uh, similarly, a bronze statue built in 2009 to honor the late actress and comedian Lucille Ball in her hometown was so hideous and off-putting that it became known as Scary Lucy. <laughs> and after an online campaign successfully lobbied for it to be replaced with something better, the original artist quit sculpture altogether. Meanwhile, over in Nashville, there's a 25-foot-tall statue of Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest built in 1998, which is offensive not only for honoring a total loser who fought to preserve slavery, but also because the face and body proportions are cartoonishly bad. Looks like Gumby. In fact, some have argued that uh, of all the Confederate statues in the U.S., this one should actually stay up because its ugliness is actually a pretty accurate tribute to the Confederacy. Leave it up. Yeah. And we, we don't even need to really get into all the examples that specifically have come out of Spain of various old religious sculptures and paintings being ruined by people trying to restore them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's their national pastime over there. Ruining art. Yeah, because I get it. as we've said before, like you get worldwide notoriety from screwing one up and then they want to copy that yeah. success because as we all know, that painting of Jesus that was fixed became a tourist attraction and actually brought in a lot of money to the town. This monkey Christ is really doing numbers. What if we, uh, what if we fucked up one of our pieces of art? On purpose. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, like clockwork, new examples of bad sculpture art just keep on coming. And the latest example comes to us from the town of Brecon in Scotland, where the local football club recently hosted the unveiling of a statue honoring the Scottish national hero, William Wallace, who most of us know from Mel Gibson's depiction of him in the movie Braveheart. And, uh, yep, just looking at this thing, oof. oof. Yeah, it's got everything. The face looks like it's supposed to be an expression of intense anger and defiance, but the result is more like William Wallace just saw a ghost or stubbed his toe. Ouch! Mm. Uh, like Ronaldo and Lucille Ball, the proportions of the facial features don't help one bit. The eyes are too big and they're too close together. The lines of the face are too deep, and the whole face seems too flat. And for lack of a better term, it's all just very derpy. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know what the deal was back, you know, in the Renaissance and before, um, where, like, some of the sculpture work defies even logic. It's incredible. There's yeah. a lot of, like, silk work and, and gripping muscles and stuff yeah. that is so incredible um, that, uh, yeah, it, it, it just can't be topped. And, and they, they were, were carving that shit out of marble. They were chipping that's the away. Is, uh, using, like, clay or whatever to do a cast. You can fix your mistakes. It just seems like we've lost the way somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, we are in a bit of a dark maybe, age. Maybe because artists don't have the threat of death uh, above them at all times. Like, well, if I the screw this up. The pulp will kill me. Yeah, I will die. Yeah. Um, so, you know. It's gotten too easy. <laughs> yeah. For these pros. We need to bring back capital punishment only for artists. Yep, I agree. Mm. And, uh, yeah, the proportions of the rest of this... William Wallace's body are not much better. Wallace's right hand is turned in what looks like a very uncomfortable position. His feet are tiny, his legs seem too short, and his whole body looks too small in comparison to his <laughs> big old melon head. Does he look like one of those uh, 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 things from the Super Mario Brothers movies? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He he's got some issues going on with that body. And also, there's this weird little decapitated head on the ground, which is about half the size of Wallace's big derpy head, so... Did he kill a child that happened to have a uh, beard and mustache? Yes. I would assume so. Things uh -huh. were pretty crazy back then. They grew up way faster. They did. You, you died by the time you were like 35, so yeah. you had to have a mustache by 10 or you were outcast. Now, on top of all of that, for a statue of William Wallace built in Scotland, it, it features all the same inaccuracies in clothing that the movie Braveheart did. Uh, the real William Wallace would have likely been decked out in lots of chain mail out on the battlefield, and other William Wall statues depict him in this way, but the Braveheart movie, it got a lot of flack for just sort of making up what 13th century Scottish knights would have worn. In reality, kilts weren't around for another 300 years. 
Yeah, Scotland doesn't really like the Braveheart movie, so it's weird that they're embracing it. Like I will this. say one thing that we have perfected in the years that have passed since its inception are kilts. Cargo kilts really... Utila kilts. Yeah, the yeah. Utila kilts, they really reached the pinnacle uh, in the late think, 90s, early 2000s. I still think they're very silly, but look, no judgment. They're very practical. Great airflow, storage, yeah. all the things you need to mm -hmm. successfully operate a booth at your local gaming convention. Yeah, uh, you, can, <laughs> you can hold a lot of dice in those <laughs> pockets. Does somebody have a D20? Yes. It's in one of these. Also, they're not covered in sweat because I have maximum airflow down yeah. there. Wow, my balls smell perfectly great. And they would be great on the battlefield. I bet if you went back and you were like, look, gave these to a bunch of Scottish soldiers uh, in accurate times, they'd be like, wow, I can have this sling and a rock right there in the uh, pocket that's yeah. in my kilt. Yeah, you can store a lot of shit yeah. in this kilt. But uh, as for why a Scottish sculptor would make a statue of William Wallace that seems so closely based on an American movie, uh, well, actually, turns out this sculpture was built first around the time the movie came out in the mid-90s. It's just on the internet now. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's not actually a new sculpture at all. And and yes, it is literally supposed to be Mel Gibson. Um, doesn't really look like him, but that was the goal. So this recent unveiling, that was just to celebrate the statue arriving at its new home at the local stadium. Great. Uh, yeah, so the, the Braveheart statue has actually spent the last 25 years in various places. Everybody wanted to see it. And everybody wanted it the hell out of there. <laughs> no, no, it went on tour. Uh, yeah, for a few years it was leased by the Wallace Monument in Sterling and uh, installed in the Visitor Center car park. Uh, but it was reportedly very unpopular and it was described as uh, among the most loathed pieces of public art in Scotland. After a few years of being vandalized so often that they had to put a cage around it, the Wallace Monument gave it back to the artist, Tom Church, who tried to auction it off but couldn't find any takers. Uh, he also offered it to Donald Trump for one of his golf resorts, but uh, Trump seems to have actually rejected that offer. The um, art of the deal is saying no to bad art. Yeah, you would have think that he would have loved this like gaudy piece of uh, Americanized Scottish history. If it was uh, plated in gold leaf, he would have loved it. Yeah. But because it looks like it's made out of uh, quick creep from the hardware store, uh, <laughs> no thanks. Not so much. Yeah. Anyway, Tom Church, he kept the statue just in his garden for the last 13 years because no one wanted it. But he did repeatedly attempt to get various local tourist spots to take it off his hands. It didn't seem to have worked. But now, finally, the local football club in his hometown has installed it outside their stadium. And it's finally gone viral in a way that it never could have back in the 90s when it was first built. Uh, as for how long it will last at its new home, well, if it managed to get constantly vandalized outside an important national monument, its chances outside of a soccer stadium don't seem too good. You put the first, yeah. just the first game with a bunch of uh, drunken hooligans walking past this thing. I, 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 I fear for this statue. But it it's, is going uh, to be like the gavel goat of Scotland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be a local tradition. Who can knock over William Wallace? Yeah, and it's it'll be a good thing to like let uh, like because no one really cares about this. So it's like yeah, just let people take their aggression out on the statue. Yeah, might actually make it look better. Might. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's you know it's still inspiring that this huge piece of kitschy movie inspired art has persisted all this time it they can't get rid of it it's like uh the superman statue from uh uh, uh justice league where it gets <laughs> like defaced and all that because yeah. everyone ends up hating him yeah it's just like that can't also get rid from of a it. movie it's too heavy they're gonna leave cheeseburgers on the uh, base of it as a tribute to mel gibson or was that, da no, that, that was, was David, David Hasselhoff? David Hasselhoff. The Mel Gibson got drunk in the car and yelled at the. Yeah, Mel officer. Gibson got drunk and uh, said a lot of like racist and anti Semitic things. Yeah. Multiple times. David and, Hasselhoff uh, did that drunk on the floor eating yeah, cheeseburgers. In the shower, he uh, yeah. ate a, a cheeseburger that fell apart and his daughter filmed him and was like, Dad, you gotta stop. It was actually very sad, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He seems to have turned his life around. Yeah. And for whatever reason, Mel Gibson seems to also be active still, so. He's working. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of things that have persisted, uh, like Mel Gibson's career, along with the statue, mm -hmm. last week the Annals of Impro Improbable Research hosted their annual, uh, or 31st annual, Ig Nobel Prize ceremony. And we first covered the Ig Nobel Prizes a few years back. It's basically a satirical award show hosted and attended by real scientists, which awards real achievements in research that are unusual or trivial. The stated goal of the Ig Nobel Prize is to honor achievements that first make people laugh and then make them think. But it's also clearly a way for scientists to let loose a little bit and 
get a little bit silly. And I think after last year, scientists specifically need a break. They need a big break. Mm -hmm. So in non-pandemic times, this is usually a pretty raucous event held at Harvard University. But for the past two years, it's been held via live stream, though they still keep things very silly. Uh, for example, this year's cash prize is $10 trillion, or rather $10 trillion Zimbabwe dollars or rather a counterfeit $10 trillion Zimbabwe bill. Uh, but anyway, this year's prizes, they went to researchers from around the world in 10 different categories. So let's just run down this year's winners. This year's biology prize went to a researcher in Sweden and was awarded for analyzing variations in purring, chirping, chattering, trilling, tweedling, murmuring, meowing, moaning, squeaking, hissing, yowling, howling, growling, and other modes of cat-human communication. Uh, basically, they spent a decade studying all the various ways that cats vocalize in the context of different stimuli and circumstances. And after publishing several studies into this, they even received a grant to continue studying what the researchers call meowsic, um, which is, uh, yeah, I've looked up the chattering before. Yeah. It's, uh, my cat does it when it sees a bird. So I think it's like almost like it must be like a hunting mechanism or something like that. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing about cats is I think most of the sounds they make are for the benefit of human of humans. Beings. Yeah, because they don't do it to each other. They do it because they think they're talking to us. Specifically whining, which my other yeah. cat does um, a lot for food. Yeah. And it's like you literally just ate. Please stop. They're diabolical. They learned how to make the sound a little baby makes. Yeah. To no, trigger it, our heartstrings naturally. It sounds just like it too. It's yeah. uh. It's, it sucks. So it yeah, honestly sucks. Hopefully with this research, someday we'll be able to uh, communicate with cats and tell them to cut that out. Yeah, they need to do like the cat communication device, like how dogs can press the button. Uh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> it'll be easier for everyone. Anyway, the Ecology Prize went to researchers in Spain and Iran who used genetic analysis to identify the different species of bacteria that reside in wads of discarded chewing gum stuck on pavements in various countries. So that's... Useful, I Send guess. Send them over to uh, Seattle for that gum wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Disgusting. Yes. Although I think when we last went, it was like the last year that it was there. They they, they uh, scraped it all pressure off? Pressure washed it off. I'm sure there's tons of gum back on it now. But it, oh, yeah, no. It, it reached a point where it was like six inches. Well, thick. that's the thing is, is like if you let it go on forever without cleaning it every once in a while, you're not even able to use the sidewalk. Yeah. It's just going to be all gum. Yes, exactly. So, look, I don't think anyone cares that they're scraping it off. It's like, okay, great. New canvas to work yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Give the next generation a chance to... Hey, is that Cristiano Ronaldo? <laughs> no, that's a bunch of gum that's stuck a to a wall. Of gum. Uh, the Chemistry Prize went to researchers from several different countries who chemically analyzed the air inside movie theaters to test whether the odors produced by an audience reliably indicate the levels of violence, sex, antisocial behavior, drug use, and bad language in the movie the audience is watching. So it sounds like they were actually able to find some moderate level of uh, correlation here but uh, probably not enough that the MPAA can just sample the chemicals in the air at test screenings. So, uh, it's so strange. All these kids' movies smell like shit because yeah. kids in their stupid, shitty diapers are sitting in it. It smells like boogers. It yeah, smells <laughs> like boogers and poo-poo. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't go to kids' movies. It's bad. Yeah. Uh, the economics prize went to researchers from several countries in Europe who discovered that the obesity of a country's politicians may be a good indicator of that country's corruption. Uh, they used uh, computer vision to look at and analyze the appearance of politicians in 15 former Soviet states and found that countries with less corruption also happened to have politicians with lower levels of obesity. Though, as you might imagine, this probably isn't the most useful way of analyzing corruption. Uh, Putin stays skinny. Yeah. He has the trick. He's like, what? You see all the other How politicians could I be are corrupt? Fat. Look at me. Look at me. Also, not a good indicator for, yes, American politicians are corrupt, and I'd say the fatter ones are more corrupt, but it's also pretty hard in this country to have, maintain a balanced diet, Yeah. even when you're exercising. So there you go. I think it's probably reliable in countries where uh, poverty is and uh, access to food is, is a big problem. If you see someone getting a little too fat, you're like, hey, buddy, like, yeah. save some for the rest of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Ig Nobel Prize for Medicine went to researchers from Germany, Turkey, and the UK, whose research demonstrated that sexual orgasms can be as effective as decongestant medicines at improving nasal breathing. Mm. So, uh, yeah, next time you're feeling a bit stuffy and you don't feel like going down to the pharmacy, just have sex. Or, if that's not readily available, jerk off. I think they mostly tested, <sighs> this. <laughs> they tested this on couples. I don't know if they tested uh, solo uh, missions, but, uh, yeah, they did find that clears those nasal cavities right up. This is like, it's sort of tied into the old urban legend that uh, 
you know, I never looked into it. I never did the Google research. But uh, back in high school, I remember people saying that, like, a sneeze was, like, one-tenth of an orgasm or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I always used to hear that. I, it sounds like bullshit. It definitely does. But, hey, look, it, if, if it's all connected, it's all connected, Elliot. Could be. Yeah. Uh, this year's Ig Nobel Peace Prize went to some researchers from the U.S. who tested a hypothesis that humans evolved beards to protect themselves from punches to the face. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it sounds like, based on their research, the answer could be yes. They found that thick beards do, in fact, cushion the face against strikes to the jaw, which could indicate that this is why human males evolved to keep growing facial hair while uh, most of the rest of the body's hair went away. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't uh, protect my face, but uh, my evolutionary path is I protect my chest because uh, it might look like nothing here, yeah. but watch out. It's a, it's a forest right you're here. Just gonna, you're going to get stuck. Yeah, in this uh, bramble. Yeah, my, my my family history. It's a lot of heart problems, so yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's very protective there. But yeah, I mean, uh, knowing this, uh, uh, it's, it's same with the balls. Yeah, yeah. Watch Nothing. out! Like, could you imagine? That's why they gotta, and they, it helps incubate them too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, yeah you you've. Uh, yeah, come at my jaw. You're just gonna. Nothing's gonna happen. Yeah, they might miss because they're aiming too yeah. low. Ugh. Yeah, there's nothing here. <laughs> <laughs> My chin's not as good as They're it looks. They're basically a leafy these days. Yeah. Uh. Uh, the physics prize went to researchers in Europe and the U.S. who conducted experiments to learn why pedestrians do not constantly collide with other pedestrians. And the short answer is that people uh, continuously adjust the path of their trajectory, which is pretty obvious. But obviously, it's a lot more complex than that. And the uh, research involved installing a bunch of Microsoft Kinect sensors in train stations and tracking the trajectories of around 5 million individual pedestrians. So, uh, I don't know what this is especially useful for, but... Uh, Wait, so is this, like, actually running into people physically, or is it, like, how many times people cross paths? Well, they're just, the like, of... studying, you know, because you'd think putting a bunch of people in a big crowded space, they'd be bumping into each other. But mm. people, obviously, they, they know how to avoid each other. And uh, so, what, yeah, they just studied, like, the paths of different people and tried to come up with What I think would be more interesting, which I thought this was, was, like, imagine, like, a city like New York is very pedestrian, heavy, walkable, people going to the same place a lot of the times every day, bodega, work, whatever. Hot how many, dog, like, pizza. How, how actually familiar are the people around you on a day-to-day basis? Like, are you actually walking by a million different people all the time? Or are you unaware that you're seeing the same people all day, every day on the sidewalk. That is interesting. I don't know how you would study that without... Uh, a big privacy a breach. big <laughs> privacy issue, but um, yeah, that would be interesting to see because... Like, how many times in Los Angeles going to, like, the Staples Center or any stadium yeah. or show or anything like that, have you crossed paths with the same one person? Probably Out a of lot. a city of millions. Probably, like, more often than you might guess. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to sit with that in a nice uh, CBD tablet tonight yeah. to think about mm. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, on the flip side of all of that, the Kinetics Prize went to researchers in Japan, Switzerland, and Italy who conducted experiments to learn why pedestrians do sometimes collide with other pedestrians. And they found uh, what they found is that having just a few pedestrians distracted by looking at their phones can throw off the whole crowd's ability to anticipate uh, the patterns that uh, their fellow pedestrians are doing. This is interesting because this is also true of uh, traffic. Like one, one, one car hitting the brakes once can yeah, have a one, ripple effect. One car who's not paying attention and rides too close and then slams their brakes has like a ripple effect going back. It's like three miles, I think. It's they've seen, crazy. Uh, there's actual like they've done uh, from actual video, the computer taking the actual data of it yeah. and showing the wave that goes through from like one action. Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. So it makes sense that something like that would happen with uh, people as well. Because mm-hmm. everyone is sort of, we've evolved in a way where you can navigate crowds without hitting We're like each a other flock of much. birds. But then you throw in yeah. distracted walking, which that would have never happened. Our, our, our ancestors, the hunter gatherers, they were never walking around looking at their hand, yeah. looking at whatever they were holding in their hand. Oh, rock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Mm. <laughs> Caveman <good> accidentally <laughs> trips and falls into a mall fountain. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is this? Uh, The Entomology Prize went to researchers from the U.S. for their research study, A New Method of Cockroach Control on Submarines, uh, which is actually a study from all the way back in 1971 about how to effectively fumigate submarines while docked so that the sailors aren't stuck underwater for weeks with a bunch of cockroaches. And uh, so, yeah, that's a throwback, but very important. Yeah. Not really relevant to the vast majority of 
anything, but... but very important to a select few of, of, of people out brave there. Brave men and women. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, finally, though, the transportation prize went to researchers from several African countries, as well as the U.S., U.K., and Brazil, for determining by experiment whether it is safer to transport an airborne rhinoceros upside down. Um, the research, <laughs> research was based on the fact that to avoid inbreeding among endangered black rhinoceros communities, uh, African governments occasionally relocate rhinos to mix the gene pool up a bit, and they do so by sending the rhinos and hanging them from helicopters by their feet. And thanks to this research, we now know that suspending rhinos upside down is no worse for the rhino's health than hanging them right side up. Although both are pretty shocking to the system, as you might imagine. Yes, I would think that that would be the case. What the fuck? Who are you people? Mm -hmm. Anyway, and you want to fuck? <laughs> I'm here because for one reason, I'm horny. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's not a whole lot of us here. So the it's either me small. or... Uh... It's like being uh, an elderly man at the villages in Florida. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Men uh, don't live as long as women, so... It's you gotta take it, great it's, ratio. If you've seen the movie, the documentary about it, <laughs> yeah. there is a there is like definitely guys who yeah. kind of sort of live there, but just are around it's to such, have sex with the older documentary, women. Documentary, um, some kind of heaven, I think it's called. It's very good, but yeah, one of the characters, very depressing character. The, I mean, but, there are a lot of the characters are very depressing. But the, I but think yeah. the most depressing guy is this guy who just like has no savings. Like he's just sort of. He's just been living his life one day at a time, and now he's really fucked. He's like 80. And he just has, he has a van. He lives in a van at the villages illegally, and he's his whole goal in life is to find a girlfriend who can uh, support, support him. him financially. <laughs> yeah. And he's, uh, which, you know, on the surface, it's like kind of charming, but he's also like kind of a dick about all of it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to feel uh, bad for him, I yeah. guess. I don't know. There's like a point in the story where you start to feel sympathy for him and then he just immediately goes back to being a piece of shit. You know? On the flip right. side, uh, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but it was great. I watched it last night. Uh, Barb, Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. Oh, yeah. I love that. That movie, <laughs> I, I didn't know what I was getting into, but it definitely wasn't that. Like, when I, yeah. the, the intro of that movie, I was like, am I watching, like, the right movie? Yeah, Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar is like a throwback to, like, the uh, 90s sort of, like, Austin Powers era of comedy. Very much. It's it like, is stupid a comedy. absurd movie. It reminded yeah. me of, like, Hot Rod, but for yeah. women. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, very good. But anyway... Movie tangent. There. We're back. <laughs> uh, the 2021 uh, no Ig Nobel Prize winners. There you go. Um, scientific research, not always interesting, but sometimes it's mildly amusing. And uh, it's nice to see the people doing the research, enjoying the fruits of their labor, even if it is just in the form of a silly award show and a computer printout of a $10 trillion bill from Zimbabwe. Yeah. It's, it's just nice. It's to nice to be, be acknowledged. <laughs> Um, speaking of, sil of silliness, though, the January 6th U.S. Capitol riders just keep snitching on themselves in the dumbest ways, more than half a year after they stormed the Capitol. And the latest example of this is a member of the far-right Oath Keepers militia group who didn't even self-snitch indirectly by telling someone else who then went to the FBI. He was actually already facing charges for his role in the Capitol insurrection, but the case against him may have gotten a bit more airtight thanks to him unwittingly blabbering about it to an undercover FBI agent. Yeah, all these other people is just they loose lips and then someone Or their else, moms turn them in or yeah, something Yeah, this like guy that. just literally talked to an FBI agent. Uh, here's Vice. An oath keeper and accused capital writer who owns a tattoo parlor in upstate New York unwittingly poured his heart out to an off-duty FBI agent who'd stopped by his business for an appointment. Roberto Minuta, who's facing serious conspiracy charges for his alleged role in the January 6th insurrection, was lulled into a false sense of security when a group of people, including the agent, booked an appointment to get matching tattoos at his parlor, Casa di Dolore, in Newburgh, New York, on July 17th. During the three and a half hours that the off-duty Fed and his entourage were getting tattooed, Minuta covered a lot of ground with regards to his case, according to recently unsealed court documents. He even ordered pizza. Uh, as from how much Minuta revealed to the FBI agent that the FBI didn't already know, th that's unclear. But they certainly got what sounds like a lot of great off-the-cuff sound bites from him uh, about the case against him. So uh, Minuta's lawyers are now arguing that this taints the case against him, but the FBI agent claims they only asked one clarifying question and that everything else was revealed by Minuta uh, without any prompting at all. <laughs> hey, guys, you remember January 6th? Yeah. But anyway, I, I was there. Let you me tell you all crazy? about it. So, yeah, maybe Minuta's lawyer should have... Uh, done a better job advising him to just shut the fuck up about all this while his case is ongoing. No, yeah. uh, if a, if a uh, strange man comes to you uh, looking for uh, 
fishing tips or to go on a fishing trip with him, don't have gay sex with him because you're going to reveal everything. Ozark, another great show. <laughs> Very good show. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like, they literally, he works at a tattoo parlor and apparently he's just anybody that comes in to get a tattoo. He's telling them all about January 6th and, uh, yeah, by the way, I'm under investigation right now, but you guys seem cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't know uh, what kind of shop it is, but maybe it, maybe it does better business by having uh, uh, an insurrectionist tattooing there. Well, like everyone else uh, in similar cases, uh, you know, he has leaned into this branding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like like the anti mask coffee shop in Arizona, like uh-huh. all these all these places that are they've leaned into the far right branding, and uh, in a lot of cases, it sounds like they're doing really well. It's a uh, uh, my Mike Lindell recently was like, actually, it's really good for business that I keep doing this. I mean, it might be. Yeah, I mean, he, the people that uh, enjoy what he's doing will buy pillows they don't even need. Yeah, half the country will never do business with him, but the other half, who previously would have had all the various pillow companies to choose from, now will only buy pillows from him. Yeah. So who knows? Anyways, another right-wing cell phone news. A state senator in Alaska who has protested face mask requirements has found herself in a bit of a pickle due to the fact that her anti-mask activities got her banned from the one airline that flies between her home in Anchorage and the state capital in Juneau. Now, you might not know this, but air travel's the only reliable way to get to many parts of Alaska, including its capital, due to cities like Juneau not being connected by roads to the rest of the North American highway system. You would assume an elected Alaska lawmaker would know this, but eh, here's the Seattle Times. Eagle River, Alaska Republican Senator Laura Reinbold has asked to be excused from legislative business in the state capitol, telling fellow lawmakers that she can't reach Juno. In a procedural request Thursday morning, she asked to be excused from votes in the capitol starting September 11. The excusal ends January 15, three days before the start of the next regular session. Explaining the request, Reinbold said, there's no airline that flies into Juno other than Alaska Airlines that I'm aware of. Reinbold was banned from Alaska Airlines earlier this year for failing to follow the company's COVID-19 rules on mask wearing. Oops. It continues. Delta Airlines is the only other large carrier that flies into Juneau, and Reinbold is currently in the capital after flying from Anchorage to Seattle and on to Juneau via that airline. Delta's service to Juneau is seasonal and ends in September. Quote, I believe what Alaska Airlines has done by my political ban, restricting my movement from the state capitol as a senator, is unconstitutional, she said by text message on Thursday afternoon when asked whether she is unable to work in the capitol because of the airline's actions. Earlier this year, Reinbold drove through Canada, then took an Alaska Marine Highway System ferry to Juneau. No hard surface roads connect Juneau to the North American road network. Ferries also cross the Gulf of Alaska between Whittier and Juneau twice per month. Get fucked, political ban. <laughs> this political ban. All you had to do was wear a mask. God. Uh, yeah, this woman's refusal to wear a mask on an airplane has meant that instead of being able to simply take a 90-minute nonstop flight from Anchorage to her job in Juneau, she's had to fly via another airline from Anchorage to Seattle and then up to Juneau, which takes at least eight hours total. <laughs> And since those flights are only available in the warmer months, her only other option is driving 800 miles through the wilderness and in and out of Canada before getting on a ferry, which takes at least 20 hours total. Um, Sounds like it'd be a lot easier to just wear that mask. Yeah. You goofed. Yeah. Come on, you gotta know at least someone who's a pilot. Everyone up in Alaska's got a flying license. Hire that guy who uh, discovered Timothy Treadwell's body inside of that bear. Or just telecommute. I don't think you can. Yeah, I a guess lot of these right, state yeah. capitals, specifically because they they didn't want the Democrats to get one over on them, mm-hmm. they were like, "No, you have to be in person to vote. No Zoom. You got to be there." So uh, yeah, it looks like you goofed, lady. Yeah. Anyways, another government news. We mentioned this briefly in a previous video last week, but the solution to Texas's draconian new abortion laws might be coming from an unexpected source: the Satanic Temple. We've covered them in the past, but they're a non-theistic religious group who, despite all appearances otherwise, don't literally worship Satan, but rather use Satanism as a tool for combating what they see as a Christian theocracy in the U.S. federal and state governments, which goes against the doctrine of separation of church and state. They've previously gained notoriety for building a large bronze statue of Baphomet. Which and, looked beautiful, and, unlike the other yeah, statues. Yeah, unlike all the other shitty statues these days, the Baphomet statue is fucking awesome. Yeah, so and they, they, didn't they sue Netflix over copying it in the Sabrina show? They did. That's how good it was. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, they built this big Baphomet statue and then attempted to get it installed at 
uh, state government buildings that featured monuments to Ten Commandments because they're like, Wait, you can have of, this. Yeah. Like, clearly we can have our bath See, statue. Seems like you are favoring uh, one religion. Yeah. And uh, yeah, in one case, it did result in the, the Ten Commandments getting tossed out. Good. Another, another case, I, another state, I think it's still still in the courts. But yeah, they're, you know, they're just trolls and they, they make things hard for Well, if you don't have the Ten Commandments Christians. in there, well, the people are just going to be killing each other. Well, this is cool. We have this other, we have laws that are uh, not in the, <laughs> the Bible as well. Mm, yeah. There's a lot more of them, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's Fortune. The non-theistic religious group based out of Salem, Massachusetts, has filed a letter with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration arguing that their members should be allowed to access abortion pills without regulatory action. The temple is attempting to use its status as a religious organization to claim its right to abortion as a faith-based right. The group argues that they should have access to the abortion pills misoprostol and mifepristone for religious use through the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, RFRA, which was created to allow Native Americans access to peyote for religious rituals. Under these rules, the temple is arguing that they should be granted those same rights to use abortifacients for their own religious purposes. Uh, spokesman Lucian Greaves said in a statement, I am sure Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, who famously spends a good deal of his time composing press releases about religious liberty issues in other states, will be proud to see that Texas's robust religious liberty laws, which he so vociferously champions, will prevent future abortion rituals from being interrupted by superfluous government restrictions meant only to shame and harass those seeking an abortion. Speaking of documentaries, the, the one about the Satanic Temple is called uh, Hail Satan. It's another good one. Yeah. Uh, you got you got all your recommendations coming at you. You got a lot of a lot to watch off Lots this uh, watch. episode yeah. of uh, our show that isn't news dump. Add so. that to your list. Yeah. For between our episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, in other religious news, we've got a bit of a sad update to a story we covered a few weeks back. Zebulon Simentov, who uh, has been the last Jew in Afghanistan for the past 13 years, has changed his mind again about whether to leave the country now that the Taliban is back in control. Previously, he said he wouldn't leave. Then he seemed open enough to the idea that a Jewish organization sent a team to rescue him and take him to Israel, but he refused to leave at the last minute when he asked them to pay off his large personal debts, and they refused and left without him. Uh, well, in just a few short weeks, he apparently decided that uh, he would, in fact, be leaving. Yeah, here's the, the Times of Israel. For more than five days, Zebulon Simentov and over two dozen women and children rode a bus crossing war-torn Afghanistan and Taliban checkpoints as the country's last Jew left his homeland. Footage obtained by Israel's Khan public broadcaster shows glimpses of the perilous journey taken by Simentov and his rescuers before they finally safely reached a neighboring country this weekend. The footage shows Simentov and the children on the bus traversing the barren landscape. In the background, rescuers can be heard warning them that they are going through a particularly dangerous area. Finally, the footage shows him surrounded by children with faces blurred to protect them and the families left behind after arriving across the border from where they will likely be taken to the U.S. Oh. He's coming here, huh? Mm. Great. Hell yeah. Uh, according to the guy who arranged for Simentov's escape, the same guy Simentov uh, initially refused to go with, uh, what changed his mind finally is that his neighbor said to him, go and take our children with you because they are also in danger. His problem isn't the Taliban, but Islamic State, Al-Qaeda. In his case, it's the other crazies that emerge each day now. He fears them. But as we talked about last time, he also fears any legal repercussions he might face in Israel for refusing to divorce his wife for the last 20 plus years. So the chance to go to the U.S. instead probably helped with the decision as well. Uh, it's unclear whether Zebulon Simentov, we don't know where he is currently, but uh, we welcome this new American with open mm -hmm. arms. Uh, we hope that he gets to spend his twilight years annoying the people around him as much as he annoyed his neighbors back in Afghanistan for so long. And not to bring it back up, but wouldn't it be lovely if he showed up in the villages in Florida? He would have a great time. He would have the time of his life. Yeah. Or, or he'd be so annoyed by all these other people. Yeah. He's, he's gotten so used to all this attention. He's the only Jew in Afghanistan. I and would love to see, like, the, the line dancing crew at the villages embrace him and be like, come on, come on, Zimentov, you get in here. All right, and he actually loves it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope I hope for the best for this guy. Yeah, so, like, hey, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. He's been through a lot. Mm -hmm. Anyway, before we get to the headlines half of the show, this episode is sponsored by Upstart. If you're carrying a credit balance month after month, it can feel like you're in a never-ending cycle of debt. Upstart can help you make that final payment so you can get ahead. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, 
consolidating high interest debt or funding personal expenses. Over half a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment. Upstart knows you're more than just your credit score and is expanding access to affordable credit. Unlike other lenders, Upstart considers your income and current employment to find you a smarter rate for your loan. With a five minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. You can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash weird. That is upstart.com slash weird. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash weird. And this episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. What we love most about HelloFresh is the variety. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, from vegetarian meals and calorie smart choices to extra special gourmet options. There's something for everyone to enjoy, with recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. HelloFresh is also a great value. It's over 30% cheaper than shopping at grocery stores with pre-portioned ingredients that ensure that you won't spend money on excess food that just ends up in the trash. We both especially love the quick and easy bowl recipes that HelloFresh offers. And coming up in next week's menu options, you got pork bulgogi bowls and sweet and spicy chicken stir fry, both of which are ready to serve in just 20 minutes. This week, one of the easiest and most delicious recipes, I had uh, sausage and pepper flatbread pizzas. Mm. It was Look, so easy. You just slice, slice up the vegetables and the sausage, toss it in the oven, and it was incredible. Damn. Yeah. Start having fun in the kitchen like we are by going to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird14 and using the code WeeklyWeird14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. Again, that is up to 14 free meals by going to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird14 and using code WeeklyWeird14. All right. Now let's get into the weirdest, wildest headlines from around the world this week, starting with... Jacinda Ardern reminds New Zealanders to please stop having sex in hospital during COVID. We're going to have to get those beds from Japan if you guys don't knock it off. Please stop having sex in hospital. I've been watching a lot of uh, Wellington Paranormal. Great show. Oh. Another recommendation for you. It's on HBO Max. Oh, really? Very good. And I, I just love, love how those New Zealanders talk. It's very adorable. Trying to defeat COVID. And you need to stop going to hospital and having sex in the hospital rooms. I need to catch up on what we do in the shadows, the TV show. Oh, because I've seen the first uh, couple episodes and it was great. I just it's fantastic. fell off. It's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. More for everyone to watch. But yeah, someone in because in New Zealand in their their COVID wards, they're just it's like basically gymnasiums. They're sort of just separated by uh, shower curtains, mm -hmm. and uh, someone just fucked in the middle of a big room with like ten other people. So, and then that made it sway all the way Wait. to a press conference. Wait, hold on. Why, you were you were stuffed up. Yeah, just yesterday. Yet here you are, breathing I'm normally. I'm cured. <laughs> no, you don't understand. I read this research. <laughs> so the... they cleared your nose up <laughs> if you have an orgasm. Yeah. So there's this guy going around. He lives in a van outside, but he's been going around to everyone here in the COVID ward and having sex with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clear you right up. Yes. Student whose grandma died of COVID is mocked at Tennessee school board meeting video shows. This time last year, my grandmother, who was a former teacher at the Rutherford County School System, died of COVID because someone wasn't wearing a mask. This is a very, this is a very, this is a, hey guys, we're here to act professional. Uh, yeah, this is a very annoying video to watch. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, very depressing. Last week we had the supercut of like four and a half minutes straight of assholes at these meetings. Um, but yeah, this week we had this one. This this fucking teenage boy who goes up at a school board meeting and he's like, "If we want a normal school year, we have to wear masks." And he's talking about he's like, my, "Last year, my grandma, who used to teach in the school district, she died because she was around someone who didn't wear a and mask." Did someone yell out, then, "Liar!" Yeah, and like the people literally behind him who are like, they have these signs. They're like, "Let our kids breathe." I'm here on behalf of the kids. She starts heckling this kid. Whose, whose grandmother died. Who's saying that uh, masks are good and they should keep wearing masks at school to uh, ensure the safety of themselves and their relatives. And not that it matters, but it wasn't just like, we need masks, uh, my grandma died. It, he literally came with firsthand experience of how uh, the virus is spreading in his school and being like, we can't even get through a normal school week. Yeah. And also when kids come back 
from uh, getting the virus and recovering it from it. They have to then take tests they haven't studied for because they haven't been able to get the curriculum because they haven't been in school, but there's no, uh, like way for them to make up for it. It's all fucked up. And yeah. then he's like, and by the way, my grandma died and everyone's like, liar! Boo! Boo! Yeah, I'm pretty sure the lady like right behind him ended up getting totally doxxed on Twitter and like lost her job and some shit. And you know what? Don't feel bad. I don't feel bad. You mocked a child's you dead mocked grandma. You mocked a child's dead grandma at a school board meeting. You fucking monster. Yes. Ugh. Oklahoma governor removes only physicians from medical board. What a country, yeah. The, uh, Oklahoma, a lot in the news a lot li- recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, the, uh, the state medical board had a couple doctors on it. Now it doesn't. Kind of weird. You would, you'd think you'd want more uh, physicians on medical boards for their you know, unique expertise mm-hmm. from uh, their education and their job experience, but not in Oklahoma. No. Seems, Just seems, a bunch of rabble-rousers. Uh-huh. Just a lot of nag. Yeah. A lot of nagging from these physicians. It's like, like they know better than us. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. I just keep seeing Oklahoma pop up. There's like a uh, a meme recently where like, you know, we're at the top of Texas. There's that little sliver of Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. And there was like an arrow like, hey, what goes on here? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this fucking big in between two other states. I, uh, oh God, the, I looked up the reason for that. Someone will listen in the comments, but it, it had something to do with an old like treaty from like way before that about a certain uh, latitude Yeah, that Texas when it became a state, wasn't allowed to keep. Mm-hmm. So they, a they sliver. gave it to Oklahoma for some reason. Yeah. Um, but what goes on there now? That's yeah, what real... happens there? Hey, Probably but... not a whole lot. No. Hmm. I wouldn't imagine much happens there. Governor Abbott says abortion bill won't force rape victims to have babies. Texas will eliminate rapists. So there you go. Okay. okay. You, uh, What's the plan? Didn't get into specifics, but he he made sure to let everyone know. Eh, listen, I hear your complaints. You are you are pointing out a very obvious problem with all this is that uh, women who get raped should have access to abortion. Well, we're not going to do that. You get six weeks like everyone else, so you better be checking a lot. But uh, we're going to make it impossible for how, that how to about this. Yeah. How about no more rape ever? What if we just eliminated that? I don't know why we haven't thought of this. And sooner. then everyone clapped. I don't know why we haven't thought of this sooner, but we should just eliminate rapists. Yeah, we should also ban murder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shit. Yes. Wow. There you go. So there you go. Uh, Texas, you're in good hands. Uh, in other news, I believe the Justice Department is now actually suing the state of Texas as well. Uh, instead of just being like, yeah, we're going to protect you by enforcing the laws that are already on the yeah, books. I believe, they, I believe they went a step further and are actually yeah, suing the state. Okay, good. Because, yeah, their first thing, it sounded like, in the headlines, like, oh, they're going to do something. And it was like, no, no they're not doing shit. We, we are going to uh, enforce. If anything bad happens, yeah. don't worry. We are on the case. All right. Good. But now it looks like they've gone a little bit further. So who knows? Three near identical Boris Vishnevskys on St. Petersburg election ballot. This is a thing I didn't know about. Apparently very popular in Russia that uh, if you want to fuck up your political opponent's chances in election, you pay someone to change their name to be the same name as your opponent and also run in the race mm-hmm. so that the voters get confused. Yes. And in this case, they went above and beyond. They got two more Boris Vizhnevskis, and they had those guys uh, like alter their appearance to look like him. So they both grew out like white Perfect. beards, and uh, one of them even like shaved his hairline Great. so he'd have like the, the horseshoe bald look. Love it. So yeah, voters are gonna be like, oh, I, I know, I was supposed to vote for Boris Vizhnevsky, the, you know, the older guy with the beard and uh, the baldingness, but now there's three of them, what do I do? Didn't something similar to this happen in Florida like last year or three years ago during the midterms where uh, someone yeah. ran with the same last name? I don't know if it was intentional, but this does occasionally no, it was, happen. Uh, it was someone had got funding to run someone against a Democratic candidate in yeah. South Florida, I believe, with the same name. Yeah, it was. But a, they didn't even they, they weren't even like out campaigning or anything like that. They just put their name on the ballot to confuse people. Yeah, you do see it pop up in the U.S. with uh, Spanish names because... Mm-hmm for whatever reason, it's easier. <laughs> it's easier to find people with Spanish first and last names. It's easier to find someone in the phone book mm-hmm. with the same name and uh, just put them on the ballot. John Smith. Um, so yeah, I mean, in Russia, it's next level. This is just every local election has multiple people with the same name, but uh, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, maybe Vishnevsky is the Smith of Russia. I don't know how popular the name is, yeah, but I don't know. Uh, Boris is definitely popular. Popular mm-hmm. enough that we mock it here. Yeah, okay, Boris. <laughs> Uh, um, here's a great one for you. A big ship got stuck in the Suez Canal and blocked traffic. Again. 
Yeah. It's hilarious. Unfortunately, they got it out real quick. They, yeah. they got the tugboats We're to it this now. in enough time. Yeah, they, they learned their lesson, and uh, they had the tugboats at the ready, and they What's... dislodged that ship. What's happening with the Ever Given? Is it still in in ship prison? I haven't seen an update on it, but yeah, I imagine it's probably just still sitting there. Uh, They're gonna turn that into like a tourist attraction. I don't know if that because for a while there, the the captain or the guy who like whose terrible luck uh, he wasn't the captain to begin with, but because everyone else like passed the buck, he ended up as the captain. And then yeah. they're like, "Well, international maritime law says you have to stay with the ship." Uh, I don't know what happened to that guy. I hope he figured it out. It's like the captain of the Costa Concordia who was like, oh, I'm leaving. Uh, you're the captain now. Anyways, hope nobody dies. Oh, they did? Oh, uh, it's your fault. Why didn't you do anything? Oh, geez. Naked Boston woman drove golf cart through armed standoff outside Tampa, Florida. So she's not a Florida woman. She's a Boston woman. But she did a very Florida woman thing. She's yeah. having a great time. Hey, look at these pricks having a little standoff here. Driving around a golf cart hey. completely naked. And uh, decided to give the cops and uh, Everyone a little criminals show. a little bit of a show. Just imagine you're... We want to thank this woman for distracting the criminals long enough <laughs> to where we could apprehend them. You know what? I think I will come out. <laughs> you imagine you're a cop in an armed standoff. You're like, come on. And then just do 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 A little golf cart with a naked woman drives past. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Ma'am, stop. <laughs> She's no. actually a cart girl. She was bringing them uh, a Michelob Ultra. Yeah. Heard you guys are thirsty. You guys want a couple Bloody Marys? Lil Uzi Vert says fans ripped $24 million diamond out of his forehead. Did he not bleed out? Uh, I don't know. He, this was at like a concert, right? And he like stage dove or something yeah, like that? Yeah, he did that? a stage dive and someone in the crowd grabbed that diamond. He, apparently he still has the diamond, but uh, it, did, it did damage his forehead a bit. Yeah. He was saying a couple weeks back that... Uh, Doctors were telling me he had to get that diamond out. They're like, bad things are going to happen. You're, you're just like yeah, you'd imagine living it. with a constant infection. You need yeah. to get rid of that diamond. But uh-huh. uh, he loves that diamond. Looking like the vision. Yeah. The diamond in his head. Yeah. But um, I'm tired of these people. Mm-hmm. Their lives. Well, no, that's that's Dr. Manhattan. Oh, Dr. Manhattan. Sorry. Yeah. Similar characters. Yeah. Anyways, Viagra thief, not a hardened criminal, lawyer says. Because it makes your dick hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a good headline. Yeah. Good job. Good job, whoever wrote that. Yeah. Not a hardened criminal. Just just Viagra thief. You don't even need to steal it anymore. It's, uh, they, it went generic, so all those companies, they sell it online now. Yeah, there's all those uh, we, online. They, they've tried to sponsor the show. And before, I was like, mm, I don't know. But now I hear it on every podcast that I listen yeah. to, and I'm like, it seems pretty normal so now. So much for our ethics. Yeah, yeah. They're just like, yeah, all you do, you just go on and have like a five-minute, like, chat with a a doctor, I guess, and you say, my dick don't work. And they're like, all right. Ship it out. Send you some blue pills. Generics. You got Mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I was like, at first they they were like, hey, do you want this? And we're like, nah, nah, medical shit. Kind of weird. Now, literally every podcast that I listen to has the ads for, uh, there's like three different like major companies for it. Yeah, there's Hymns. Yeah, just want to give them a free, uh, if they want to sponsor again, we'll tell you about them. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I do think all those other podcasts doing it, they are admitting that they got a bunch of limp dick listeners. Meanwhile, our show, very young everything and works just fine. Yeah. Viral. So in 10 years, na- yeah. then our audience will be old enough. Yeah. 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 We'll get you soon. Don't worry. A Chicago woman who missed her flight at a Florida airport said there was a bomb in her checked baggage, officials say. She was at the airport. Her bags were already on the plane. But, she, <laughs> but she missed, She, you know, whatever. I don't know. This happens. Couple, happens hey, look, a couple of fishbowl margaritas down at Chili's, you yeah. might miss your flight. She missed the, the call. I'm sure they were calling her name, but... She was deep in that fishbowl margarita. Yeah. And so she got to the gate and they're like, there it goes. There's your plane going no, down the runway. You don't runway. understand. I like, have to be on that plane. No, bring it back. Tell it to turn around. Like, it doesn't work that way. Uh, there's a bomb There's on. a bomb on it. I have a bomb in my bag. You're going to want to bring that flight back. And they're like, um, ma'am, did you just ma'am? say there was a bomb in your bag? Uh, yeah, so bring it back around and I'll fix that for you. Yeah, and then I'll get on the plane and, and everything will be fine. And now she can never fly again. Mm-hmm. Great job. Yeah, she was the rare woman in the year 2021 who got put on the no-fly list for classical reasons. Yeah. no, Nothing mask-related. So you're banned from flying, huh? What'd you do, not wear a mask? Actually, I uh, might have said there was a B-O-M-B on the P-L-A-N-E. I didn't think it through, uh, obviously. Um, shouldn't have done that. Well, now she has, like, the plausible deniability to just be like, nah, they told me to wear a mask. I said no. Like, she could just say that to people. Like, oh, I can't yeah. fly. Yeah, you know, I was thinking of the anti-mask next, thing. Next fishbowl margarita's on me. 
Fellow freedom fighter. Yes, because all I can do is drink at my hometown Chili's now. And final headline, Heron becomes New York City icon after being pictured devouring rats for breakfast in Central Park. Just this big old majestic bird just chowing down. It actually dipped it in the water first to, to lube it up. and then Yeah, just, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. yeah it's like uh, Joey Chestnut and those hot dogs. Yeah. yeah, just a big fucking rat down this bird's skinny little throat. I didn't think, I didn't think Herons ate rats, but they do in New York City. Where the rats are gigantic. Ain't nothing, no, ain't no place like New York. Here in New York, our birds are eating rats. I miss And it our so rats much. are eating pizza. I miss New York so, so much. I would love to visit. It's been several years now. Well, yeah, I mean, one year, an entire year was like, you, you can't go there. So uh, yeah, it would be nice to go back. Maybe you know? not right this second. Are the subways back? I think they, oh, are. they probably are. I think everything's kind of back to normal. They always manage to fix things up in New York surprisingly fast. Yeah. Like, yeah, th- there was. You a, look at pictures of it, you're like, well, that's fucked. There was a joke on like the Los Angeles subreddit where it was just like, Los Angeles. And it's like, hey, do you guys want to have an outdoor socially distanced brunch? And it was like, New York, hey, will you come snort cocaine out of my asshole right now? Yeah. Like, d- they're, apparently things are that back to normal in New York, which is great for them. Great for them. I hope so. Yeah. Anyways, that's our show, folks. Yeah. Uh, we did some other episodes this week. Yes, we that, did. That you may have watched, may not have watched, might not have heard about due to certain some bullshit things. on the end of YouTube. But uh, yeah, they're over there. And, yeah. Uh, one make, will make you feel good for a little bit, and the other one will uh, hit you with uh, some truth bombs that'll make you sad. Yeah. So check both of those out as a nice uh, digestive aperitif, whichever you want to consume in whatever order. But check them both out. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Comment for engagement. And have a great start of your week. We'll see you soon.